Welcome back, everybody, to the KC Sports Report. Michael Darcy, your host here as always, and I'm recording this video live from the Sports Radio 810 WHB Studios, and I'm joined by my good friend Josh Fan of ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com, and we're going to break down how the Kansas City Chiefs won Super Bowl 57. Chiefs Kingdom, your Kansas City Chiefs put an end to the Philadelphia Eagles season by winning Super Bowl 57 by a final score of 38-35. Harrison Butker drilled the 27-yard field goal, which proved to be the game winner with eight seconds left. And Josh, the Chiefs are yet again Super Bowl champions. And for the second time in the last five seasons, the Lombardi Trophy is coming back to Kansas City. Josh, we were able to do a post-game show on your channel. How are you feeling 24 hours after the fact? I'm feeling like a Super Bowl champion, Michael. Man. It hasn't sunk in yet. The Kansas City Chiefs are the best football team on the planet. We are Super Bowl champions, and nobody can ever take that away from us. Yeah, it just feels so good. It feels so satisfying. It just feels like a relief. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned this yesterday many times, whether I was talking to you or one of my friends before the game. I said I really, really wanted this one, even more than the first one. Because once you get that second Super Bowl, what, you know, you talk about Patrick Holmes winning multiple Super Bowls, then we're entering a whole new category. We're, you know, at this level that Chiefs fans never realistically thought we could be at at one point. And it's here. Like, we always dreamed of Patrick Mahomes winning multiple Super Bowls, but you know, it hadn't happened yet. But it's here. Second Super Bowl in five years, and he's got the mul- he's got the second one. You know, he's won multiple now. He joins just twelve other quarterbacks who have won multiple Super Bowls, and it's just an amazing feeling. Like we uh, we're, we're the villains of the NFL. Everybody hates us, and they hate us because we keep winning. Patrick Mahomes is a two-time Super Bowl champion, a two-time NFL MVP, a two-time Super Bowl MVP, and he's twenty-seven years old. And like we said all last night, this ring separates him from everybody else. And I just find it so incredibly fitting that the Chiefs won this game coming from behind. The the Chiefs, that has been their staple. The the postseason comebacks that have happened for the past three years, just time and time again, regardless of the situation, regardless of the deficit, the Chiefs always find a way to come back and win in the end. And with a 10-point deficit at the half, the Chiefs were trailing 24 to 14. That was not that was not enough to keep Patrick Mahomes down. And the one biggest statistic that I look at is Super Bowl teams that were leading at the half by double digits were 26 and 1. And the only other game that, you know, the home team or I guess the team that was winning didn't win was that game uh, obviously Tom Brady came back 28 to 3, an all-time great Super Bowl storyline. And now it's 26-2 and two because Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team pulled off seemingly the impossible by coming back from a double-digit deficit in the second half, and they're the Super Bowl champions, man. Yeah, and I got to say, we said that when the Eagles played good offenses, their defense was not very good. Their defense was fraudulent, Michael. We their said defense it. was fraudulent. We told you guys I mean, all this week. Yeah, they were, they were fraudulent, man. They could not stop the Chiefs' offense, and it didn't matter who it was, and everyone was doing their part. And this, this Eagles defense, they faced Aaron Rodgers, and he put up points. They faced Dak Prescott, and he put up points. They faced Jared Goff, and Jared Goff put up points. You know, if you had just watched the Eagles season, paid attention to the statistics, that would have told you that good offenses can put up points on the Eagles. Offenses with a pulse can score on the Eagles, but the Eagles and their fans thought, oh, because we have a great pass rush, that, you know, we're going to dominate you. But that's just not been the case at all this year, and I don't know why people thought that was going to change against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. It's insane that an all-time great pass rush, a pass rush that had 78 sacks going into this game, a pass rush that featured four guys with double-digit sacks, could not muster a single sack against this Chiefs offensive line. And the protection on Patrick Mahomes was the single biggest factor in the Chiefs winning this game. Because as we all know, Patrick Mahomes re-aggravated that high ankle sprain 
and at times it looked bleak. But if he was constantly getting hit in the second half, the Chiefs would not have won this game. So the Chiefs were able to win this game up front, and ultimately it had that ripple effect on the entire game. So that's just so incredibly big. But I wanted to talk about three of the biggest plays that, in my mind, won the Chiefs this game. The first one was the Nick Bolton, a good old-fashioned scoop and score for the touchdown. He was able to recover a Jalen Hurts fumble, brought it all the way back to the house, and that tied up the game at 14. Without that defensive play, you don't win this game. The second one that comes to mind was the Kadarius Tony punt return, the longest punt return in Super Bowl history, a 65 yarder. Somehow, Kadarius Tony stayed on his feet and was able to take that ball to the five yard line, which set the Chiefs up in the red zone, and they would go on to score on the very next, I think, possession or the next play. That was such a big play in this game. You could argue it was the, the shifter, the momentum shifter in this game. But the final play that I want to talk about. Something that is not really getting the amount of recognition it deserves, but I think it's going to go down as the new jet chip wasp. Patrick Mahomes, on a bum ankle, was able to somehow find a way to scramble for magical 26 yards, get a first down in the, in the final minutes of the fourth quarter. That play, in my opinion, won the Chiefs this game. Granted, the game was still tied at that point, but you just knew that after seeing Patrick Mahomes fight it, fight all the way back and able to just break off a big run given the fact that he could barely move. And when he got tackled, he got up. You could see that he was in immense pain. He was grimacing. But that was greatness. That that play was the definition of Patrick Mahomes. That's a legacy run. I, I don't think that we've ever seen somebody really put the team on their back quite like Patrick Mahomes did in that moment. And that's why I think it was the biggest play of the game. Yeah, you could argue many plays were the biggest play in this game. There were just so many good ones, you know, so many to pick from. Uh, Mahomes scrambling there, though, I mean, that was very impressive just considering the ankle injury as well. I mean, you could tell he, he, he was hurting, man. He was hurting, and he was favoring the other ankle just a little bit after getting up from that run. Um, but he was willing to do whatever it took to win that game. It's incredible, man. It's absolutely incredible. And that's why I think that that run will go down as the best in Chiefs history and definitely the best in Super Bowl history for the Kansas City oh, come Chiefs. Come on, Mike. You're being disrespectful to Damian Williams. Listen, I, I, I think it's easier to call this one more impressive because look at the moment in the game. This game was not over. The Chiefs needed this run. Not that they didn't need that Damian Williams run, but that called game. When Damian Williams broke off that run for the touchdown, that iced it. That sealed the game. But without this Patrick Mahomes 26-yard scramble, which just seemed magical, you probably don't win this game. That's why I think it's bigger. No, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I was just giving you crap. But, uh, I mean, the Damian Williams one was big, too. Don't get me wrong. But, no, yeah, I mean, they really needed that run. And for a second, and I think you were the one that mentioned this to me, um, maybe not. Uh, I, I remember thinking for a second when Mahomes was on that run, all right, Mahomes, get, get down, get down, get down. And we're trying to take as much time off the clock here as possible. Like, I didn't want them to get too close to the end zone with too much time left to the point where, like, they would have had no choice but to score just because there's only so many downs. Um, but it ended up working out. Well, you know, you bring up an interesting point with trying to, you know, keep the clock going and not scoring too quickly. A selfish play, or selfless play, rather, that happened in this game was a Jarrett McKinnon run that he just slid at the one-yard line, which burned a minute off the clock in the final two minutes of this game. If he would have just taken it in for the score, who knows what would have happened. We might not have won this game because the Eagles would have driven down the field. They probably would have scored, and you know the way that Nick Sirianni was calling the plays that night. They probably would have gone for two, and they probably would have got it. So Jarrett McKinnon sliding at the one refusing to get a, get a Super Bowl touchdown is one of the biggest plays also because if he scores there, the Eagles will get the ball back with, what, a minute and a half, and there's no telling what that could do. Yeah, I totally agree with you as well. I think, you know, well, I, I would have felt good still about winning the game even if he had to score a little bit earlier, um, but there are, I do think that if the Eagles went down and they scored, which could have been possible that Nick Sirianni was going to go for two, and that's what I was afraid of. 
Yeah, and honestly, there's one thing. I think Nick Sirianni, for a guy that was in his first Super Bowl as a head coach, coached fairly well. Uh, he made some big time calls in the first half where it just seemed like they were just the most aggressive team on the planet going for it on every fourth down. And when you're playing the Chiefs, you need to do that. But I think as the game starts, go ahead. You uh, there was the one season two in the second half where they were in their own territory. And so, like, you know, I can respect Sirianni's decision to punt because then you're putting the Chiefs, you're giving the Chiefs the ball back in your own territory. But I was honestly shocked they decided to punt the ball back on fourth and two. Yeah, it, it was kind of surprising. But what I was going to say is that once the game started to wind down and the plays, each and every one got bigger, it seemed like Andy Reid just outcoached Nick Sirianni. In the big moments, Andy Reid was the guy. He had the best play calling in the red zone that we've seen. He was able to exploit that Eagles secondary, get mismatches, and I don't think I've ever seen more open touchdown catches uh, this year for the Chiefs. They had two guys that were wide open on both the Kadarius Tony touchdown and the Sky Moore touchdown. There was not an Eagles defender within five or ten yards. Yeah, I mean, it was just a masterful game by Andy Reid play calling and scheming those guys open. And they were also, you know, unlikely because it's kind of more than have a touchdown all year um, until this game. And Kadarius Tony, uh, you know, it's, it's a toss up what you're going to get from him from game to game. And uh, I, I said to you that I don't think people understand just how much of a weapon Kadarius Tony is. And I don't think the Eagles defense, you know, really counted for him, but neither did their special teams either. I can't believe it, man. Like, we were talking all year that the Chiefs' special teams unit is going to let them down, man. They were just not that good. They always just, you know, faltered in the moments that we needed them to be okay. And the Eagles' special teams was the one that couldn't hold up. And Kadarius Tony and <laughs> Kadarius Tony broke off the biggest punt return in Super Bowl history. And he doesn't make that play, you probably don't win. Because when you, when you made that play, the momentum in the building shifted. You could just kind of feel that this was the Chiefs' time, and they capitalized, and it's a thing of absolute beauty because the Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. And, Josh, I wanted to ask you, what do you think was the biggest key offensively for the Chiefs to win this game? Because we saw in the second half when they needed to make plays because the Eagles' offense was just draining the time of possession, we saw our offense just absolutely go down the field and score at will. Uh, that's a really good question. I feel like the easy answer would just to be, or just to say Patrick Mahomes. But in the first half, I definitely feel like they abandoned the run a little bit. And then in the second half, that's, they, they did the exact opposite. Uh, the first drive coming out of halftime on offense, they fed Isaiah Pacheco, and Isaiah Pacheco had a rushing touchdown. And the run really opened up in the second half. I mean, the Chiefs were just ripping off. Six had an eight-yard run, and Isaiah Pacheco was having himself a game. And he's really an unsung hero as well because he, he, had, he had a really good game, and he just it doesn't get talked about enough. Um, so I would say, you know, the run game opening up in the second half really helped. And we always said that you could run on the Eagles' defense. And I just I was saying during the game, run and they will fold. And that's exactly what happened. And shout-out to Andy Reid for running the damn football. That has been – the biggest complaint that Andy Reid in these moments seems to not know how to manage the clock. And isn't it funny that against his former team, a team and a city that kicked him out because he wasn't able to manage the clock, put on an absolute masterclass on how to handle a game. I, I find that so funny. And I want to read off these statistics because if you hear how the Eagles dominated this game in nearly every important statistic, you're just kind of left with wondering how did the Chiefs win this game? Because the Eagles had more first downs, they had more total plays, they had more total yards, they had more total, uh, total drives, they had more passing yards, and the time of possession was 35 minutes to 24 minutes in the Eagles' favor. How the Chiefs were able to win this game, I don't think I'm ever going to understand. And the simple answer, I guess, to try to sum up how the Chiefs did this is Patrick Mahomes. There's no other there's no other explanation because when you get basically outclassed in these statistics, 
you don't often find yourself winning these games, but the Eagles didn't have Patrick Mahomes, and the Eagles didn't have Andy Reid, and the Eagles didn't have Travis Kelsey. So it's just it's crazy how the Chiefs can not be better in some key statistics and still find a way to win. Yeah, that's what they've done all year, and they were battle-tested for these moments, and they they were tested like a champion you know, all postseason, really, and the Eagles weren't, and that's why I think the Chiefs came out on top. There's a huge reason why the Chiefs came out on top. It's because they have that experience that we talked about all week, and that was why I thought it was so ridiculous that all the Eagles media was kind of, or all the national media as well was just picking the Eagles to win this game. All the media, um, you know, like the Fox panel and pregame, they picked the Eagles in the clean sweep. All the ESPN managers were picking the Eagles to win them. Like, guys, this is Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid you're betting against right now. And I would understand if the Eagles had the slight advantage because they were favored in this game. They were one-and-a-half-point favorites. But as we saw by the Fox panel making their selections for this game, the utter disrespect that the Kansas City Chiefs received is just astonishing. This team has been in three Super Bowls in the last five seasons, and not a single person, not a single analyst thought, hey, it might be a good idea to pick the best coach and the best quarterback to win this game. And I think that, again, this is the moral of the story. The Chiefs have been doubted since day one. Ever since the Chiefs entered this offseason, they were proclaimed not good enough. And I find it so incredibly fitting that in a year that was, quote-unquote, a retool year, the Chiefs win the whole damn thing. And one thing that I wanted to talk about that, honestly, is going to get overshadowed by the fact that the Chiefs won this game. The Chiefs had a lot of inexperience. The Chiefs had a lot of rookies starting in this game. I think they had eight or nine, to be exact. But the Chiefs' defense kind of got cooked. It was not a great defensive performance for the Chiefs, but they were just kind of able to make one or two plays that the Eagles couldn't make and it proved to be the difference in this game. But what were your thoughts on uh, some of the Chiefs' defensive drives in this game? They were rough. They were rough for sure. But at the end of the day, I think you have to give the Chiefs credit because they came up with just enough stops for the Chiefs to win. And, yeah, Jalen Hurts had an all-time great Super Bowl performance um, at quarterback. But the Chiefs' defense made enough stops. And I think the Eagles, there were no questions about the Eagles' offense, I think. The more questions were more surrounding their defense. You know, Jalen Hurts is a great quarterback. He was the runner-up for MVP. But uh, it's the Kansas City Chiefs, man, and I just they find ways to win. Jalen Hurts absolutely balled. I mean, I think you could make the case that he had the best performance a quarterback's ever had as the losing player in a Super Bowl. I mean, he had... He had 304 yards, uh, passing yards for one passing touchdown, but he had two rushing touchdowns, and we just could not stop him on the ground. He had 15 carries for 70 yards, and it just, it was brutal. Like, all the short yardage that they were able to convert just by giving him the ball and just say, hey, Jalen, go make a play, it was fantastic. And it was really fun to watch, but, I mean, as a Chiefs fan, we were rooting against him. But I was really impressed by the Eagles' offensive line. I didn't think that they would be that good in pass pro, our defensive line didn't really have an impact on this game. Chris Jones did the best he could, and Frank Clark tried to step up in some moments. But the defensive line for both teams, really, was pretty underwhelming. So I, I think it's funny that coming into this game, both the Eagles and the Chiefs had great defensive lines, and in this game, uh, they didn't show up at all. Yeah, and we had a comment about that last night on – my post-game show on my channel about how, hey, if you had told me before the game that Chris Jones and Frank Clark were going to be a no-show, that we still win, you know, I wouldn't believe you, but that's kind of what happened. I mean, the entire defensive line, and the only sack they got was Colin Saunders, and it wasn't even really a sack. It was just Jalen Hurts running out of bounds. So uh, the pass rush really wasn't there, and I, it's, it's because the Chiefs linebackers stepped up, in my opinion. It really is. Like, Nick Bolden had a great night. I think he had nine tackles, obviously that fumble recovery for the touchdown. But without Nick Bolden, you don't win this game. And, you know, the defensive backs got tested, and you could argue that they didn't pass that test, but I would say that they did just enough to win this game. And if anything, it just kind of showed you that guys like Trent McDuffie and Joshua Williams were in the right place, 
they just didn't have the ball skills to turn their head and kind of break up some of those passes to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith had seven catches for 100 yards, and A.J. Brown had six for 96 and a touchdown. So those two wide receivers went off, and it didn't matter because the Chiefs were able to make just one or two defensive stops, and it was good enough to win this game. But I wanted to talk about a couple controversial calls because it wouldn't be the Super Bowl without some controversy. And I'm going to talk about three of them because there was a Devontae Smith helmet catch that got ruled incomplete. I think that was the right call because he was juggling the ball uh, and he did not have two feet in bounds and he didn't have control. So I think that the refs made the right call after reviewing it. The next one was a Nick Bolton, what would have been a second scoop and score for a touchdown, got called back. Uh, because he didn't actually catch the ball. There's a debate whether or not that's actually true. I think it was probably the right call because he had possession for like one second, but he has to show a move and has to have like three steps or something along those lines, and I don't think that he had <laughs> enough steps. I, real quick, it's, it's, the rules are if you make a football move after catching the ball that it's considered a catch and a fumble, but – the term football move is very subjective. And it's also it pretty vague. Who, yeah, and it just depends on who the official is. But, I mean, I'm watching the replay, Michael, and Miles Sanders caught the ball. He caught it, had both hands on it, and started to turn up field. And to me, that is a football move. When you put football move in the rule book, I, I see that as a football move, and I, I see it as a catch and a fumble. I would not have gotten mad if they ruled that a fumble because I can see the argument for both sides. I think what ultimately ended up not getting called a fumble is because he just didn't have one more step. I think that if he gets, you know, one more step in and Legereus Sneed gets that hit stick like a second later, that's a fumble. And man, if Nick Bolden had two fumble recoveries for touchdowns, he should have been the MVP of this game because he was phenomenal. But the final call that I wanted to discuss, because this is the one that Eagles fans and the national media have really harped on all day long, is a holding penalty on Juju Smith-Schuster while the Chiefs were driving late in the fourth quarter, trying to you know keep prolonging the clock and wasting some time without scoring. And on a big third down, I think it was Chauncey Gardner got called for a holding penalty on Juju Smith-Schuster some people say it wasn't a holding call. I think when you watch Juju Smith-Schuster run his route, he could not release out of his formation. He could not release out of his uh, his route. And so I do think that indeed was holding. So I think it was the right call, but uh, Eagles fans are going to bitch about that till the end of time, and there's not much you can do about that. But I think the refs got that right. I, I think, yeah, I mean, again, it's just it, – I think they've really overcomplicated uh, – what is determined to be a catch nowadays, and that's also another thing that it just depends on who the officiating crew is. Um, like the Dallas Goddard one, I thought. Uh, oh yeah, that's I, another I thought, one. Yeah, I thought I thought he double clutched it, and uh, I, I mean, you could say I guess oh his foot was still down when he maintained possession, but um, I always thought it was the step doesn't count or the steps don't start to count until you actually maintain possession of the ball, which, in my opinion, he didn't um, until after that foot was already on the ground. Thus, that step doesn't count, but I, I, I don't know. I really don't. That one, I think, was egregious. That one should not have been a catch because it was 3rd and 14. If the Eagles did not get that lucky break, it would have been 4th and 14. The Eagles would have punted, and who knows what the Chiefs could have done. I don't know how you can see that Goddard catch and say, yeah, he caught that inbounds, he had control of it, and got two feet down all in the same time. I just don't, I didn't see it. Yeah, me neither, but it ultimately didn't matter. It and, does It does make me upset, though, like the Miles Sanders one, too, because like I, I think Nick Bolton got robbed of Super Bowl MVP, but it is what it is. We still won. That's all I care about. I think that's what's awesome about football, is most of the time, you know, there's penalties here and there, and both teams can you know, have stuff go against them, but ball doesn't lie. In the end, most of the time, it all evens itself out in the end. And I, I think that, you know, a lot of Eagles fans that are complaining about that uh, third down call, the holding call on Juju Smith-Schuster, yeah, it did decide the game, but 
Gardner said after the game that he was holding. He was tugging on his jersey, and so it's a hold. Like, there's nothing that the refs can do in that moment but call it. And I go back to a play that happened in the first half, very similar thing. Both players were going up against each other. Juju Smith-Schuster was really held this time against Gardner, and nothing was called. And Juju was pissed. Like, you could see that he was frustrated that no call was made. And I would argue that that call was way worse and way missed uh, than the yeah. one that happened at the end of the game. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about, and I agree that one was worse. I mean, I guess you could call this a late-game makeup call. But, you know, Shannon Sharp made a really good point on Undisputed this morning, saying, you know, when D Ford lined up offsides in 2018 and Tom Brady threw that interception, no one complained that that's how that game ended or that, that game ended, sorry, uh, it was D4 lined up off sides. You know, it was a penalty. It is what it is. And I, I say the same thing right here. It was a penalty. Like, I, under, I think people are more upset that the call basically ended the game more than they're actually upset with the call because I think everyone can agree it was the correct call. And that's where I think this conversation is so stupid is we're complaining about a call that was rightly made. It was the correct call. So what are we complaining about here? If you're upset with the fact that the call ended the game, well, I'm sorry, but just because it's late in the game and you wanted to see a more exciting ending doesn't mean we can just let penalties slide. Chauncey Gardner should have held him. If he didn't hold him, then we wouldn't have been in that situation. But I still think the Chiefs would have won. They would have kicked that field goal. And while there may have been more time on the clock, I I think that we would have found that our defense could step up and at least stop them enough. Um, to win this game. But, you know, Josh, I want to get your thoughts on this. Harrison Butker coming in with the game tied at 35. What were you feeling? Because Harrison Butker missed a field goal early on in this game. Uh, The Chiefs had a chance to uh, go for it on fourth and three. They ended up declining, giving the opportunity to Harrison Butker to kick like a short field goal. He missed it. And so Harrison Butker was going into this moment, already missing earlier in the game, but, you know, what were you feeling? Uh, I ran and hid under my bathroom sink because I've watched enough Harrison Butker this year to not feel 100% that that kick was going through. And I mean, I'm confident in Harrison Butker, and he's definitely been good in the playoffs, but uh, I, I can't watch in those moments. Like, i got to shove my head into a pillow or something. So <laughs> I, I ran and paid Michael. I was a coward. I couldn't watch. I, I watched it, and, you know, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't the most confident, but Harrison Butker has come up big in the last two postseason games. You can make the argument that he won you the last two postseason games, and I think that, you know, he's here to make these kicks. He's not here to make a regular season kick that, you know, isn't really that meaningful in the grand scheme of things. But when you really need somebody to be clutch, Harrison Butker has ice water in his veins. And he put the team on his back with 27 second, well, 27-yard field goal with eight seconds left, nailed it. Chiefs go up 38-35, to 35, and the rest is history. So, Josh, 24 hours later, we are still Super Bowl champions. We're on top of the football world. The Chiefs are a dynasty. We are in, well, maybe not the dynasty, but they are at least in the conversation for a dynasty. Two rings in the last five years. Three Super Bowl appearances in the last five years. Five home AFC championship games. You'd be hard-pressed to find a team that has had this level of success. Yeah, man, and we're blessed, man. We're, we're on route to a dynasty. It's so ins- it's so insane, man. Like I was talking about this pregame. That's why football is the best sport. A-, a franchise in the Midwest, the Kansas City Chiefs, have the chance to be the premier football franchise in the world, and that's that's an incredible thing. So, Josh, do you have anything else you want to add to kind of wrap this whole thing up? Uh, no, man. I think we're gonna we're really gonna hit on content this week and just celebrate the Super Bowl win. So I'm not going to dive too much further into anything else. Um, we got a parade to prepare for. Absolutely, guys. Wednesday, Kansas City. There's going to be a parade of the ages, a celebration of champions, and the Chiefs are going to be back in Kansas City uh, for the first time since winning the whole damn thing. So 
like Josh said, we're going to be tackling this topic for the next two months. We're Super Bowl champions, and we're going to capitalize on that fact, and that comes with making a lot of videos talking about each and every single facet of this game because, quite frankly, we can. Uh, but, uh, Josh, my final question for you is where can the people find you? You can find me here on YouTube. It's just my name, Josh Fan, of course. Um, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at ShowMeFB, and you can check out my work on ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com. As for me, you can find me on Instagram, KC underscore Sports Report, and Twitter at KC Sports Report. Go check out the website, KCSportsReport.com. All of Josh's stuff will be linked in the description of this video. And for the final time, the Kansas City Chiefs take down the Philadelphia Eagles in Super Bowl 57 by a final score of 38-35, to winning the whole damn thing. And the Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching this video, and go Chiefs!